One of the most fundamental things in the game is knowing your pal stats and being able to determine what pal works for what. Is he good for farming? Is he good for harvesting? Is he good to fight? And how can I fix stuff that doesn't work well with the pal? How can I increase his stats? How can I make them better? So today I want to go over the stats so you guys can know, are able to identify and know which pal works for what and be able to have a better idea of what pal works when you get a chance to play pal world. So with that being said, let's dive in and talk about pals and your stats. All right, so here we are within the pal box. Now I'm going to go over a couple characters, but I want to make sure we pay attention to a couple things because you're going to need to be able to get used to this, uh, pretty much this menu, right? Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to cover everything exactly on the right hand side because that's pretty much where the stats are at for these pals. So I need you guys to focus on this really quick. So the first thing we have, guys, and you notice right here on the top is we have the level. So the level is pretty much the level of the pal. Usually the level will be determined of when you capture it. And depending on the area you're in, the higher level that pal is going to be. Now, you're able to increase this level two ways. Number one, you're able to increase it by either having him work on the farm. And as he works, he's getting XP and that's going to increase his level. Or you could bring him along with you and every activity that you do will give you XP and your pal will be able to level up with you. The next thing you want to know is the sex of the pal. There is a male and a female. This is extremely important because you're able to put them together and to, have to mate and to create another pal. So you want to know which is a male, which is a female. You basically want to have one of each. Uh, the next thing, guys, of course, the bottom portion, which is the uh, next area. This is going to tell you how much more points you need to level up. And last but not least is the little square right here. That's going to show you guys uh, basically what their attribute is based on electricity, water, uh, you know, neutral, uh, based on what they have, earth. And I am currently getting invaded at the current moment. And these guys are just chilling, doing, here, doing nothing. All right, sorry about that, man. I was really interrupted by an invasion. All right, anyways, we're back. So that is pretty much the affinities you want to know. So basically, the affinities are going to work very simple. So we have neutral, we have ice, we have, uh, you know, earth. And these are going to be by that little square or that little triangle that you see right there. That's going to tell you what affinity you are. Next thing, of course, we have the little heart, which is pretty much your health. Then we have the little bread icon. That's pretty much your health, uh, you know, how much food consumption you need. And then you have your sanity meter. The sanity meter is important, especially if you're going to have people working because you're going to want to make sure they maintain a good sanity. That's pretty much going to give you the, uh, you know, they're just going to go into this little pool right there and get their sanity level uh, raised. If it's too low, they're going to come in here, take a little uh, hot bat or hot tub, and they should get their sanity back. As you guys see, this is 100. He's already 100. So that is how we have that with that. Um, now, the other thing I want you to look at, of course, is the attack, defense, and work speed. So it's going to be very important that you pay attention to that because they're going to be changing constantly depending on the character you're playing. So rule of thumb is you want to bring people who have really good attacks. You want them to come with, and, with you and fight. Okay, um, if they don't have really good attacks, of course, they're not going to be good. Now, you want to have people that have a really good defensive stat as well if you're going to take them out to fight. And good thing here is you want to look for a really good defensive stat and work speed because that's going to give you the ability to determine who should you leave in the farm. So, for example, I see this guy. He's definitely really good at leaving the farm. He has a really good attack. He has really good defense and his work speed is really fast. So that means he's going to be doing stuff a lot quicker than if I were to pick, to pick this land ball that does only 70. So you want to constantly be checking their stats here to see where they go. Now, I will show you how to level these stats a little bit later in the video. But this gives you guys a better idea of who to who to put, who to place where and who to bring along with you. As you guys see the guys 200, 201 attack. This is a really good guy to bring here uh, for me to bring to fight as opposed to putting him to work because his work speed is pretty low. So you might want to look for someone that has, you know, better work speed than that one. So that is pretty much the uh, option right here. Now, when we go down to the bottom, which is currently task, we're going to go into the pal box. You're going to select the character. Let's select him. And we're going to go view. And the thing with this is going to be this here, which is his work st uh, uh, stability. So this is going to be pretty much determining what they're actually going to be able to do if you put them to work. So kindling is pretty much your fire. Uh, anything that has to do with cooking, 
planting, anything that has to do with planting, planting seeds, berries, handiwork is very important. You want to have a lot of people that do handiwork because that's just going to be taking a lot of your time, especially when you have workbenches that you want to build bullets, you want to build arrows, you want to build crossbows, you want to build armor, you want to build gear. And you can't stay on these workbenches all day, right, trying to make them go. So if you have people that are doing handiwork, they're going to be the ones doing the heavy lifting for that. Lumbering is just pretty much the people that collect lumber. So whenever you build your lumbering plant, they're going to be collecting. Uh, medicine production, that's not that important until the later stages of the game. Uh, but it does become pretty good whenever you uh, you get later because you're going to have to hear your pals in case they sprain an ankle. Or they you know have some sort of flu. You're going to be able to do that. Transporting is also pretty good as well because they're going to be moving stuff from one site to another. So whenever they're harvesting, someone's need to someone's going to need to gather that and take it to the basket or take it to the box. So you definitely need one that does that as well. Watering is just pretty much watering the fields, so you have food. Uh, gener uh, generating electricity is going to be pretty much later game to generate uh, the uh, heavy uh, supply boxes that you're going to need in order to mass produce items. Uh, but this is a little bit later, but still pretty important. Uh, gathering is just pretty much gathering the food. Mining is mining anything that has to do with rocks. Cooling is another late game element as well. It's if you're in a hot area, you're gonna have to have someone that keeps you cool to be able to maintain the heat. And farming is pretty much farming eggs, farming wool. So that's the work stability. What you want to do here is you want to look for uh, pals that have multiple things to do, especially early in the game, because you're not going to have a lot of pal uh, pals at your base to be able to do that. So you want to make sure you have a pal that does a lot of things so you're able to do multiple things at once and later whenever you build your base and you have a lot of pals in here then you can just kind of prioritize pals that just do like one or two jobs so they're constantly doing the job you want them to do okay so let's take a look at this guy so this guy's really important because as you see right here he has a partner skill now partner skills are really important because partner skills give you an additional item that you could do with your character. So for example, this one allows me to ride them when I created a mount. Now, not all of them are gonna have partner skills uh, unlocked. So you're gonna have to unlock them for you guys. So whenever I cast them, if you guys see right here, if I throw them out, there's gonna be something that appears in the middle bottom portion of my, of my character here. I could just literally call them and that's gonna allow me to ride them. So I could bring them here and that's his passive skill. Now each one's gonna have the, its own uh, so you're going to want to make sure you check out which pal has what. Okay, so some pals are going to be like this where it's going to say locked. And in order for you guys to unlock it, you're going to need to go to the technology here and unlock it for that specific pal. So it'll be like, the, it'll be like for him, will be grayed out. Or for whatever character you don't have the ability already unlocked, you will be able to unlock it by going to the, like a grayed out one and spending points on that. And that's going to unlock it. And once that gets unlocked, you go to the bench and then you're going to have to craft that item, uh, which you're going to see right here. It's going to appear right here. Once you craft this item, then you will be able to mount that character. So do keep that in mind. That is how you go about uh, doing that to be able to uh, to unlock the, whatever ability is locked. All right. So about to our pal deck here. Uh, let's go here. And now. Now that we have the partner skills, now that you know how that works, let's talk about the ability skill, the active skills. So the active skills are really important because these are going to be the skills that the pal is going to use to fight against another enemy. Okay, so everything is going to be uh, based on casting speed. So you see the cast two, cast at seven, and cast fifteen. Now this is going to tell you what you're, uh, what you are able to do. But the great thing about this, you're actually able to change these. So as you're playing with your pals and they're fighting other enemies, they're going to be unlocking traits and those traits are going to be able to be interswappable with the one that you currently have. So if it's too weak or you don't like the one that's in that slot, you're able to switch it around. Or like if you don't want a pal that has only fire, you want him to have fire, earth, depending on who you're fighting, you're able to swap that around as well. Then is the passive skill. So the passive skill is extremely, extremely important because this is going to determine how effective your pal is whatever he's doing. So, for example, this one has in, uh, decreased incoming fire damage, which is not a really good example, but this is going to be a really good example. If I go here and I look at this pal, and his passive skill is called Muscle Head. Now, the thing is, this is really good. It gives us a like plus 30 attack, so he's a really good fighter. But if I were to put him in the farm, he's going to be really bad when it comes to work speed, right? So you don't want to have that. You want to have a pal that's actually really good. So learning the passive skills and what are good for what is going to be extremely important. For example, the one I actually have working, his passive skill is called Serious, 
and that's going to speed up his work speed to a plus 20. So of course I want to have a really good pal that does really good work to be able to, you know, have a really good passive skill. So that's going to be really, really important when you're doing your character. Now, another thing is to keep an eye on the food consumption, because for example, look at this guy, he eats a lot, right? He munches a lot. This one munches a lot, that one munches a lot. But if I look at the lamb, does it munch a lot? So why is that important? Because that's going to be really important, especially in the early games, because the more they munch, the longer time they're going to take eating and the more food they're going to consume. And in the early stages, if you're not cons you're not producing enough food for them, they are just going to not do a lot of work. They're just going to try to eat. They're going to go hungry. So you want to make sure you look at characters and see what food they have to able to uh, get that going. Now, let's talk about important stuff on how to enhance them. Now, this video is not going to go over exactly how to do it, but I'm going to let you guys know what you could enhance and i'll have a separate video on how to power level up your pals to make them even better okay so you're gonna definitely want to make sure you watch that video so when we look at this character you're gonna notice that above his uh level there are four stars now each pal is able to morph into four different levels above his level so this could be a level 25 level one a level 25 level two a level 25 level three and a level 25 level four level fours of course are going to be doing way more damage and you're going to be able to increase that as well. In addition to that, you'll be able to change your active skills, which we talked a little bit earlier. And you're also going to be able to upgrade your stats. So you want to increase the attack power. If you're going to be bringing him to the battlefield, you're definitely going to want to do that. If, he, uh, if you want to increase his defense, he's, he does a lot of attack but has really bad defense. You're able to increase that. And you're also able to increase the work speed if you want to enhance how fast the person works. So it's going to be very important to be able to know what you're able to enhance. Now, in addition to these three stats, you're also able to raise their HP. So you are going to want to make sure you know that uh, because you're going to be able to not only increase these, but also the HP that the, that the character has to make them a little bit more tanky. Now, with this information, you know what pal to use, what pal to use where and where to place them. Who to bring with you to fight and how to determine if a pal is good for you or not now one thing you definitely want to know is what pal to use early in the game so you're definitely going to want to check out this video that's popping up right now on the screen to be able to do that also if you want to power level up and go super duper fast we have a video for that as well so i hope you guys subscribe turn on all your notifications and i'll catch you guys on the next video